Um, we're here today to do a pre-education for knee class. Today's class, I will do the nursing portion of it. They will be there will be somebody from physical therapy. I think Paul's coming to do physical and occupational therapy. Um, somebody from discharge planning will talk a little bit about going home versus going to rehab. Andy from respiratory is going to come and talk about uh, using an aesthetic barometer and the importance of coughing and deep breathing after surgery. Vale from next door at Terrace View will talk a little bit about subacute rehab. At this point in time, your doctor probably has talked to you about the need for rehab, though. Um, a lot of needs do go home, um, but usually your doctor has a pretty good idea at this point. Home care. Kathy from the Visiting Nurses Association will come and talk a little bit about going home with the VNA for home care. And then a patient experience patient portal, we, um, we don't have them here. What we've done is we put the email address on the sign-in sheet now. Your email address will be used um, by some of our patient experience department. They will send you an email to invite you to our patient portal. Um, patient portal at ECMC would give you real-time access to any of your medical records from when you're here in the hospital. Okay. Are you, you did you sign in though? Okay. Oh, you guys are with. Okay, I didn't realize, sorry. <laughs> um, so inside of your packet, there is some information for Meals on Wheels. Um, some people need little, just a little bit of help. There is a book on the knee replacement. There's a healthcare proxy form. We encourage every patient that comes into the hospital to have a healthcare proxy. If you do have one at home, bring us in a copy of it or bring us in yours, and we will make a copy and give it back to you. Your signature on your proxy has to be witnessed by two people, not yourself or your proxy. So you can bring it in unsigned the morning of your surgery to room 160, and two staff members will witness your signature. There's a list of rehab facilities across western New York in there, too. Like I said, a lot of knees go home. Um, it's not a bad idea, though, to have a plan B. Um, if you weren't able to go home safely, it's all about safety. Um, if you weren't able to go home safely, um, you could have a plan B set in place. And Val, like I said, from Terrace View will talk a little bit more about that too. Then there's a little survey, if you don't mind just taking a few seconds to fill it out when we're done. On page six of the booklet, there's some general information on visiting hours, telephone, TV, cafeteria. Um, visiting hours we're kind of lax with. Um, we don't care. We, we, most of the time, your, your comfort level is with your family. So we want you to be comfortable. Um, we also encourage family to be around, too, when you go down to the therapy gym and you work with the physical and occupational therapist. We like your family to be here so that they can see what exercises you're doing um, to be able to assist you at home and say, oh, you're doing that right, or no, I think she said you should do it like this. So it's not a bad idea for your family to be around for therapy <laughs> sessions. Um, you will go to the therapy gym two times a day. You'll work with physical therapy and occupational therapy one time a day. There is no charge for telephone or TV. Most people bring their cell phone. Um, that's absolutely fine. For family's benefit, there's full service cafeteria on the second floor. And um, there's like six or eight different stations, all different kinds of food on, in the cafeteria. And then there's the ground floor, Mighty Taco and Subway and Tim Hortons. So your pre-op testing is probably happening today, either before or after this class. It's done in room 160. Um, 160 is actually the surgical waiting room, so it's where you start the morning of your surgery also. There is a list of medications in your booklet that need to be stopped before surgery. Um, they include any aspirin or aspirin product. A lot of us take that 81 milligram aspirin every day. That has to be stopped a week before surgery. Um, Motrin, Advil, ibuprofen, if that's what you're using for pain, that has to be discontinued also a week before surgery. Some over-the-counter fish oils, multivitamins, and if anyone's on a blood thinner, Coumadin or Plavix or Eliquis, that also has to be um, stopped before surgery. We'll get you restarted on them um, as per the doctor's orders post-op. If your plan's going to be to go home, just make sure that you got someone at home that's at least going to be checking up on you. You really don't have to have somebody with you 24-7. Just make sure that you got someone that's going to be there to check up on you, um, help you with meal prep and things like that. You want to try to eat as healthy as possible after surgery. Make sure you're getting the appropriate amounts of fruits and vegetables, proteins, grains, along with an adequate iron supply from red meats, fortified cereals, green leafy vegetables. Um, you, there are potential for blood losses there during surgery, so we want to make sure that you're... Um, 
that we're, we're rebuilding those red blood cells. You want to bring this book to the hospital with you, along with comfortable walking shoes. Um, hopefully we won't have to worry about weather, but if you do, you want to make sure that you got comfortable shoes on and safe. Um, Stepping shoes are not good, flip-flops are not good. Um, make sure sneakers, sneakers really are the best and the safest thing to have. Um, you want to bring a brush or comb with you, glasses if you have them, dentures and supplies, and any hearing aids. If you use a CPAP or a BiPAP machine, a lot of people like to bring theirs to the hospital with them. Um, we can get it from our respiratory department, but of course, that mask won't be the one that's fitted to your face. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, when I've gone before, I don't like to bring it because I don't want all that air going through mine. Um, they just let me have a low dose of oxygen. As long as you do okay with that, that's absolutely fine. And if we felt that you needed more, they would call respiratory. Okay. Yep, that's fine. Um, and as long as you know that that's what's worked for you before. Right. Please do not bring any of your home medications with you. We'll administer everything of, that you take at home that the doctors want you to continue taking. We have toothbrush, toothpaste, shampoo, body soap. It's not necessary to bring these items with you. If there is something that you'd like to use special, by all means, you can bring it with you. The morning of your surgery, you're going to take whatever medications you've been instructed to take with just a little sip of water. Um, you're not going to take any diabetic medications um, that morning of surgery. Again, those are the things that they're going to go over with you when you do your pre-ops and also when you see your primary physician for your medical clearance. If you are diabetic, we're going to text your finger sticks four times a day. A lot of diabetics that are non-insulin dependent don't routinely check their finger stick four times a day before each meal and at bedtime, but we will do that when you're here. We want to make sure that we're keeping your blood glucose levels within normal range. You're not going to eat anything to eat or drink, rather, anything um, after midnight the day before surgery. You're going to get two different times from your physician, your time of arrival and your time of surgery. Um, you want to make sure that uh, that you're, we want to make sure that you're here um, and all the preparation is done before your surgery time. You may not get that time until a day or two before surgery. That's kind of routine with some of the doctors. Um, so just make sure that if you haven't heard from them, you know, the morning before your surgery, um, that you give the office a call. If your surgery is on Monday, you can call on Friday and just find out if you have not heard from them with your time. Your family is going to be given an ID number to follow your progress on a big screen TV that's in the waiting room, down in room 160. Um, they will take the patient in the back, get you in a gown, and then normally let your family come back in with you. They call minimal separation. They want you to be comfortable. Um, you will meet your surgical nurse and the anesthesiologist. Then the surgeon's going to come. He's going to confirm with you what he's mm -hmm. doing, a left knee, a right knee. Is anyone having bilateral? Okay. Um, that does happen sometimes. So... Um, the doctor will take a Sharpie and he will label um, what he's doing. He's the guy that's going to let you know how long surgery is going to be, so more for your family's benefit. Um, usually a knee is two to three hours, and we just ask that the family be back in 160 to talk to the doctor after surgery. And then once you're, the patient's ready to be released from the recovery room, the nurse down there will call up here to the nurse that's going to be taking you to give report. Dental prophylactics. You will need to be pre-medicated before going to the dentist. Um, depending on the surgeon, it could be for a lifetime, for the rest of your life, or it could be just up to two years. It really is surgeon dependent. Uh, newer studies show that two years is sufficient amount of time. Um, so the reason for this is you go to the dentist, you have your teeth cleaned, even routine cleaning, and you might have a little scrape on your gum, and tomorrow morning you wake up, it's gone. When you have this new joint, any infection that enters your body can settle into this new joint. Um, the amount of bacteria that we have in our mouths, of course, that can happen. So pre-medicated with an antibiotic before you go to the dentist, it's usually amoxicillin unless you have an allergy to it. It is a prescription that you get from your dentist's office. Um, the doctors have asked us to say, though, they do not want you to have any routine dental work done between now and surgery date, and then for up to six months after. So your best bet is before you see your dentist the next time, next time you talk to your surgeon's office. Okay, any questions on that at all? Okay. Can I ask a question not about dental? Mm -hmm. um, I had made an appointment uh, with my podiatrist. I have a callus on a toe that I wanted to have 
kind of mitigated a little bit before this, so it's like, but I don't know. I mean, he may be screaming at us. Maybe I should postpone that. You know what? You might want to. Yeah, it's probably not a bad idea. Yeah. You don't want to have you don't want to have any kind of open um, any, any kind of open source on you. So um, you wake up the day after surgery. You got this new joint, and we're going to get you moving. Melina, our therapy aide, um, will come into your room the next morning. Um, she, each one of the rooms has a reclining chair that's on wheels. She will take you down to the therapy gym in the reclining chair. Um, depending on what time you come up. The day of surgery, therapy may be in to work with you, and Paul will talk a little bit more about that. But some of the language that you're going to hear when you're here with us is your call light. We want you to utilize it at any time. Um, we do purposeful rounding here. The hours from 6 in the morning till 10 at night, someone from the staff is in to see you. But you always have your call light next to you. Um, during night shift, it's every two hours. Um, but again, we want you to put on that call light if you need it. Your bed alarm. Um, every patient that comes to our floor is placed on a bed alarm. We want to, uh, it, it notifies us, the staff, if you're attempting to get out of bed by yourself. We want to help you. Um, we don't want you doing it on your own. Blood tests, daily labs will be done um, to check your levels, um, including your iron level, the hemoglobin. Every so often someone needs a blood transfusion. Um, there's potential for blood loss during any surgery. It's a little bit higher with an orthopedic surgery, so we do monitor your labs every day when you're with us. Your vital signs along with your um, pulse ox, we're going to monitor that. That shows us how much oxygenation you have in your body. Foley catheters, we don't see too much of anymore. Um, Foley catheter uh, is a bag, a tube that would be put into your bladder during surgery to collect urine. Um, we don't see too many of these anymore. If you do wake up with a Foley catheter, there will be a standing order to remove it either that night or first thing the next morning. A hemovac is a drain that we used to see a lot of. We don't see too much of it anymore, but sometimes um, patients will wake up with this after surgery. It's put into the joint space to collect blood and body fluid from around that joint space. The drain is emptied every shift by the nurse taking care of you. The output is monitored. Um, if you do have one of these, they, the doctors remove it the next morning. It's a very small catheter tip that's closed with just a band-aid. Um, foot pumps, leg pumps, TED stockings. You will wake up with, um, with TED stockings on, um, most likely. These are to help prevent blood clots. Um, we also will send you home with these if you do have them. Um, with the orders on your discharge instructions. Foot pumps and leg pumps, these hook to a machine that sits at the bottom of your bed, and these also are used to help prevent blood clots. It, air is instilled into these to promote circulation. And the Aquacel dressing is a waterproof dressing that the doctors use after surgery, meaning you can shower. So um, this will be on you after surgery, okay? And again, you can shower, that's a good thing. So while you're here at the hospital, we're gonna give you all of the home medications, your home medications the doctor wants you to continue. We're also gonna be giving you three doses of antibiotics. First two you get in the recovery room and the next two you get up on the floor. We'll give you some type of an anticoagulant or a blood thinner. And usually what we see is a high dose aspirin for that, unless you have um, any kind of history of clots at all. We'll give you colase or some other kind of stool softener. Pain medication and immobility slows the motility of the bowels down. We don't want you to get constipated. So we'll give you some type of a stool softener. Pain medication, of course, we'll be giving you that. We do purposeful rounding, the hours from 6 in the morning till 10 at night. We kind of talked about that a little bit. Um, night shift is every two hours, but just make sure that you're discussing your pain medication with your night shift nurse. Meds to Beds is a new program that we have available here at the hospital that we're trying to utilize. Um, we're piloting it on our floor. Um, what it is, it's, a, it's a, the ability for you guys to choose to have whatever one-time prescriptions you might be getting from us. It's usually pain medication um, that you would be getting from us. Prescriptions that don't have a refill, so it won't be anything routine. 
Um, but you do have the ability to have our providers send those prescriptions down to our pharmacy here on the ground floor, Medicare. It's uh, the, the when those go down, the um, one of their techs, the pharmacy techs, would bring them up to your room, deliver your medications to your room, and collect whatever regular copay that you have due for your prescriptions. And what it does is kind of a convenience so that you don't have to stop at your CVS or Walgreens or whatever on the way home to pick up your prescriptions. Again, it's nothing that is, um, that is mandatory, it's just an option for convenience for you guys. Um, miscellaneous, there is no parking fee today. You're going to just drive to the gate today. They're opening up on their own. Um, if if um, if not, we do have the ability, you know, I know today it's working that way, but we do have the ability to sign for your, your card for parking. You're going to get some, yes? Is that just today or is that today, it's, uh, today it is working like that. It's probably, I'm not sure if, when it's going to be fixed. It's been down for a little bit. When you drive to the gate, it's just a sensor that opens it. Okay. Um, you're going to get a few business cards today. Please reach out to anybody with any questions that you may have. There's a few other people that are going to be presenting today. Um, so any questions that you might have, um, you have it. You you will get a number of business cards. Any questions at all now? I'm going to go over a little bit about the uh, kind of social work discharge planning role, and then open it up. If you guys have any questions, feel free. Um, normally therapy goes before me, um, but I'll kind of go over a little bit about what we do. Um, we work very very closely with your therapist. We kind of follow your progress while you're here, um, and then we're going to help you leave the hospital. So we're going to help you get home or to rehab, whatever your goal is. Um, so our therapist will assess you normally right after surgery, and they'll kind of give us an idea if you're on track to go home or if you're going to need to go to rehab. Um, just to show of hands, how many people are thinking about going to rehab? Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so rehab is an option. Um, uh, uh, it's, it's an option for everyone if you qualify. Um, your therapist determine if you qualify. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about discharging home first. Um, so if you're on track to discharge home, the therapist notify you. And then we normally set you up with home therapy and then also whatever therapy is recommending equipment-wise. So normally equipment would be a rolling walker if you don't have one, a commode, possibly a shower seat. Um, we would let you know if those items are covered. Um, normally the walkers are covered, it's the shower seat and the commode that typically aren't covered. So we will let you know that up front before we order it. Um, and then we set you up with in-home therapy. Um, is everyone from Erie County here? Yeah. That's good. Um, if you weren't, we would let you know what, what's available to you from whatever county you're from. Um, so in Erie County, the options for home therapy are Visiting Nurses Association, Macaulay C and Home Care, Will Care, Amedesis, and Alpine Health. Um, we have a couple vendors from Visiting Nurses, from Macaulay C and from Will Care here that are stationed here. Um, so if you don't have a preference, we typically make a referral to one of those agencies they meet you here at the hospital before you leave, and then they um, kind of set you up with a home therapy schedule. Um, normally, the, the home therapists come out um, for about one to two weeks after discharge. They're going to visit you maybe one to three times a week, depending on you know how well you're doing. Um, so that'll get you right to your follow-up with your surgeon. At the follow-up with your surgeon, he might say to discontinue the home therapy and start doing outpatient therapy. So that's kind of uh, the process for discharging home. Um, if you were to discharge rehab, um, you just kind of add rehab into the mix. So um, you would get therapy here, then go to rehab, then do home therapy, and then follow up with your surgeon, and then outpatient therapy. Um, if you do want to go to rehab, what we recommend you doing, even if you think you're going home, we recommend that you take a look at the rehab list in your packet, and uh, it's called pre-applying somewhere. We, we kind of equate it to making like a hotel reservation, um, so you're reserving a room at rehab in the event you should need one. 
Um, they don't charge you for it. It's a good idea just to have a backup plan in place in the event you do need rehab. Um, so what you would do to pre-apply is you'd um, kind of review the list. You can ask family members, friends for their opinion. Um, you'd want to call the facility that you're interested in, ask to speak their, to their admissions team, and then they'll ask you questions about when your surgery is, um, who your surgeon is, uh, what your insurance is, and then um, they're going to hold a bed for you. If um, you get here and we figure out you don't need rehab, we just cancel it for you. You don't have to do anything. They don't charge you for it. So it's a good idea, even if you're thinking about going home, to pre-apply somewhere. So what determines, you said we decide, what determines if you could just go home or if they think you need the rehab? So it's largely dependent upon what your surgeon says and what therapy says in their evaluation of so you. So if you're not able to do what they want you Correct. to do? Correct. If they feel you're not safe and uh, you know not independent enough, then they're going to probably recommend rehab for you. Right, Paul? Yes. Paul's from therapy. He'll uh, he'll probably go over a little bit more about you know what they're looking for, um, but uh, they're very good. They'll they'll specify goals that are tailored to your house, and um, if you're not you know meeting those goals, they're probably going to recommend rehab for you. Um, are there any questions about discharging home with services with equipment or discharging to rehab? Anything you can think of? Yes. Um, I've read about some kind of a ice chiller or thing they put on your knee. Mm -hmm. Is that something we go home with? Or? So that would that would be a cryo cuff. Mm -hmm. And Paul will um, go over that. And, and Paul will touch on that. Okay. That'll come up with you from surgery, and you you take that right home with you. So we don't have to order that. That's once you get it, it's yours to take. So yeah, good question. Any anything else? No. What I'll do is I'll leave my card up here, my business card, if you um, want to take one home with you. If you think of anything when you're at home, give us a call. If you don't know the answer, we'll figure it out for you. So, good luck with surgery, okay? Thank you. All right, thanks. Hello, everybody. My name is Paul Kelleher. I'm one of the physical therapists who works here. I um, just want to go over what you can expect from physical and occupational therapy the day of surgery and following that, okay? Um, so for those of you who are going to have surgery during the earlier part of the day, you will be seen by physical and occupational therapy the day of surgery, and you'll we'll see you in your room, okay? And when we see you the day of surgery, we don't do a lot. We're going to go over your exercises, and if you feel well, we'll get you up out of bed and have you take a few steps, sit up in the chair. That's about all we do, Okay? Now for everyone else, we'll see you the following day, and we'll see you in the physical therapy gym. And Lynn, you're gonna give me a tour? Okay. So Lynn will give you a tour, and um, it's just right down the hallway, okay? And we'll see you twice a day right up until you either go home or go to rehab. You can go home when you can get in and out of bed by yourself, stand by yourself, walk by yourself, go up and down stairs by yourself if you need to, and when your pain is managed. So when that happens, then you can go home. Now, if you're not able to do those things, um, then you may need to go to rehab, okay? Um, the, as far as equipment, um, you don't need to bring any equipment with you. Each room has its own private walker. When we get you up for the first time, we use a walker. And then the gym, we have all types of equipment. Um, like Liz told you, any equipment that you may need to go home, we will order that for you, and we'll have it delivered right to your room, okay? If you go to rehab, the rehab facility will order that equipment for you. Okay? All right. Um, good news is that everybody will be able to uh, put as much weight through your operative leg as you can tolerate. So you will not damage your knee by putting weight through your leg. It may hurt, but you will not damage your knee. Okay? And we actually want you to put weight through that knee. Okay? Um, as far as exercises, if you wouldn't mind opening your book to page 18, please. So these exercises, I want you to circle the ones that I go over because we're not going to be doing all of the exercises in the book. And you are to start these exercises the day of surgery, okay, day of surgery. 
Um, so for those of you who are not seen by physical therapy the day of surgery, because your surgery is a little later than the day, I want you to start these on your own, okay? Obviously, once you've had something to eat and you're feeling okay, you know, you're, wake, you know, you're waking up from the anesthesia, then go ahead and start those exercises. So do these a few times at home prior to surgery so you're familiar with them, okay? So the first exercise that we're going to do is the ankle pump, and that's just pumping your ankles up and down, okay? And you can do these exercises on both sides if you want to. You don't have to, but you can. Um, the next exercise right below that is a quad set. So with your operative leg straight, all you're doing is you're pushing your knee down, contracting these muscles, okay? You're not bending it, you're just pushing it down like there was a marshmallow underneath your knee and you're trying to smush it. That's it. Okay, so page 19. We're going to skip the one at the top of page 19. And we're going to, the next one we're going to do is the heel slide. Heel slide is just bending your leg up and down. So while you're lying in bed or you're sitting in a reclined chair, it's just bending that leg up and down, okay? Right. It's very important that you do start bending that knee right away. Um, obviously, it's all, and just, you know, all of these exercises are done within your tolerance. You know, I don't want you doing these to the point where it's putting tears in your eyes, okay? So all within your tolerance, but it's very important you start moving that knee right away, okay? Turn the page, please. Okay, so we're not going to do any of the exercises on page 20, and we're only going to do the one exercise at the bottom of page 21. Okay, bottom of page 21, and those are the knee slides. So with your foot on the floor, all you're doing is you're sliding your leg forwards and then backwards. So foot's on the floor, you're not lifting your foot off the floor, you're sliding forwards and then backwards. That's it. So... The knee slides, don't worry about doing those on the day of surgery, okay? On the day of surgery, just do the first three that we went over. And as far as the knee slides, we'll worry about those the following day, okay? All right, so do these a few times at home, and then when you do have surgery, if you're not seen by a therapist, start them on your own, okay? Um, crowd cuff. Okay, it's kind of a fancy uh, cold pack. Um, so everyone's going to get one of these, okay? Um, now, I'm just going to kind of go over how to use it right now, but we'll explain it to you when you're in the hospital, so by, by the time you leave the hospital, you will know how to set this up, okay? So you basically just take the top off. There's a line for ice. You put the ice in, then there's a line for water. You put the water in, put this over, and then you just put the top back on. Okay. Now, um, the unit that we're going to give you, um, it actually has a motor, so um, you will actually plug this in, okay? Um, now, as far as, this is the cuff, what you do, so there's a wide part and a narrow part. The wide part goes on the wider part of your leg, like this, okay? Now, there's a little hole there, that's where your kneecap goes, okay? So it doesn't have to be perfectly lined up, just close. So that's where your kneecap goes. And this doesn't have to be real tight, just snug. And then you just attach the lower part, plug it in, and then what it does is it takes ice cold water and it circulates it around your knee. Um, so, and what's nice too, it also has a compression effect, all right? This is very important that you use this. More you use it, the better. Um, that swelling will cause pain and it'll also slow down your healing. So um, the sooner you get that swelling down, the better you will do. And then go right in over close or do you recommend it? Well, no, normally what we recommend is, yes, you can put it over close, mm -hmm. um, uh, but if let's say you're wearing shorts, what we use is like a pillowcase. That works perfect. Sometimes if your clothes are too thick, you might not feel the cold as much because we want it to get cold. Um, pillowcase works great, but if, you're, but if you're wearing pants, you can certainly put it over your pants. So in other words, put the pillowcase over that thing? No, no. so you take the pillowcase, you put the pillowcase around oh, your knee okay. and then wrap it around your knee, okay? The more you use this, the better. Is there a schedule like 15 minutes on? 15 no, on, no, no, like no. More the better. More the better. Okay. Yeah, it's not late. No, oh, typically with cold pass, yeah. 15 minutes. On. No, no, that's a really good question. Have you asked that? Um, no, more the better. Okay? These things are great. Oh, and when you set this up, don't set it on the floor. Okay? And the reason being is because then the motor has to work against gravity and it could burn the motor out a little faster. So what we recommend is just like set it up on a chair or set it up on a table just so the unit is level with your knee, okay?
Okay, um, so like Liz told you, for those of you that are going to go directly home, once you go home, you'll have home physical therapy out to the house within 24 to 48 hours. They're going to work with you right up until your follow-up visit with the doctor, which is about 10 days. At that point, your doctor will probably recommend you going to outpatient physical therapy. Um, so that's the general protocol, physical therapy here, home, then outpatient. If you go to rehab, like Liz said, you just throw that in the mix. So therapy here, rehab, home, then outpatient. General protocol, there are exceptions though. Okay, um, any questions? Okay, great, well, um, nice meeting you folks, and we will uh, take good care of you when you come in for your surgery. Good morning, everyone. I just want to take a few minutes to talk to you about this brilliant device here. We're okay, great. It's called the incentive spirometer. It's a, basically what it is, it's a visual aid for you to see how much air you can pull into your lungs, okay? So whenever anybody has surgery, especially joint surgery where you're not moving around like you normally would, you're laying in bed for an extended period of time, you tend not to take deep breaths. So as you're laying in bed, your lungs actually collapse from the bottom up because you're not taking those deep breaths, you're not moving around. Okay, so this is a way that we can prevent that from happening and fix it when it does happen. Okay, so basically what you're going to do is through this mouthpiece right here, nice tight lip seal, take a slow deep breath in just like you're sucking on a straw. All right, when you do that, you see this blue indicator move up show you how much air you're pulling into your lungs. You want to pull that thing all the way to the top of your breath as high as you possibly can, all right? Hold it a couple, couple seconds and then release, okay? So what you're doing is you're expanding your lungs, reopening the areas that may have collapsed down. Um, you might do some coughing when you do this, which is a good thing. If not, we want you to do a little forced coughing. Again, just to mobilize anything in your lungs, keeping them as healthy as possible, okay? Everyone's gonna be different. Some people will do 1,000, some people will do 3,000. It depends on your age and your sex and your lung history. Uh, were you a smoker? Are you a smoker? Do you have COPD? Do you have asthma? Those kinds of things. Okay, so the important part here is to do the best that you can do. Get that as high as you possibly can with that big deep breath in. All right. Now what will happen is after your procedure, you'll come up to your room. Pretty quickly after that, we'll bring one in for you. We're going to go over it again. We're going to give you some practice runs. From that point forward, we really want you to do it on your own. All right. Every one to two hours while you're awake. All right, about 10 breaths, nice slow deep breath, do a little bit of coughing. We're going to come in and we're going to encourage you to do it as well, to make sure that you're doing okay. Uh, but really the first 24 to 48 hours is the most critical. You want to reopen those lungs after surgery and then keep them open. Okay. As you get up and you're doing physical therapy, you don't have to use it quite so much. But that first two days, definitely every couple hours. All right, every one to two hours, about 10 breaths. Okay. Questions for me? All right, thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Valerie Killian and I'm here to give you information about subacute services so you understand what your need may be after surgery. First and foremost, you should go home. You should go home because that is where you will recuperate the best and that is where you will feel the best. However, there are many reasons why you shouldn't even go home and some of them are the basics of if you can't get up and off the chair on your own, up and off of a bed on your own, or with a device, meaning a cane or a walker or another person. You can't get into the bathroom in and out by yourself, up and off the toilet on your own, and or in and out of your kitchen to do simple meal preparation. You should consider subacute. Subacute is free choice. No one should tell you where you should go. However, I'm here to be your resource to give you some ideas of the think about. Number one, don't go any place blind. You're going to be post-anesthesia. You don't want to go walk into a place that you thought was the Hilton, and it's a rehab facility meant for your rehabilitation, and your thought process of what it might look like and be could be different than what it actually is. So make sure you go and visit unannounced ahead of time so you can see really what the situation is. Make sure that if you want a private room, they have all private rooms to give to you. Otherwise, how can someone promise you a private room? Make sure that you are on a unit that's all orthopedic. You're having your knees replaced or your hips replaced, and you want to make sure you are on an orthopedic-only unit that is infection-free because you have new joints. You don't want to be around any infections that could possibly penetrate your, your new surgical site, and you want to be very, very careful. Um, 
Make sure that you have a gym that possibly is separated, not just by a curtain or across the way, that you're with like patients, that you are rehabbing with other people like yourselves. Make sure that you're going to get therapy six, seven days a week, sometimes twice a day. These are the questions you want to be asking when you go and have your post-surgical plan. Don't do the surgery without a plan meaning who's going to be there for me at my house or which rehab facility am I going to? Who's going to cook my meals or bring my meals or what am I cooking ahead of time to freeze or what subacute am I going to and did I look at their menu? All right, so it's as simple as that. Um, you want to make sure that you understand your location and your accessibility. We here have a subacute on the campus called Terrace View. It is the long-term care facility. However, we have approximately six units that are truly long-term, and the rest are all subacute services or short-term stay. We have 17. We have 400 beds. Hospital is 600. Combined, we are a 1,000-bed campus, and we're a level one trauma center, so we're pretty busy. So please, if you, that is the thought that you'd like to stay on a hospital campus where you've had your surgery, make sure that you even call us ahead of time because we never know what we're going to get because of all the traumas that come through and all our orthopedic traumas. Um, I think that's it. My biggest point is that too is that if you are looking at subacute, no one should have you sit down and fill out hours worth of paperwork. They really just need to know your name, your date of birth, the type of surgery you're having, where you're having it, the date, and your insurance company. They don't even need to know the policy number. They need to know that you have the insurance, what the company is, and to make sure that we have or they have your insurance company's contract. And that's pretty much how it works. Don't do anything blind, though. Remember, you've just had surgery. I'm not sure about you, but I don't feel so hot right after surgeries. And I think you should know what you're getting yourself into. Terrace View does have an all orthopedic, non-infectious unit that is only orthopedic. We have a gym that is separated by a hallway. You are only with like patients. We have all private rooms with all private bathrooms, with all private showers within those private bathrooms. 22 showers. My housekeepers love it. So um, why? We're a brand new facility. We're the newest facility in Western New York. So that's why we have what we can accommodate for you. We also have a bariatric unit, a ventilator unit, men's behavioral health, two um, Alzheimer's units, lockdown units for memory care. Uh, we have orthopedic subacute. We also have cardiac, neuro, you name it, general surge, trauma. We have it. So I'm going to give you my card because if you need more information about subacute services, you can call me. I will be your information for you. When you go to subacute, make sure you dress and bring appropriate clothing. No skirts, no tight jeans. Um, things that can be layered in case you get warm in the gym because you will be working out. And that goes no matter where you go. All right? So I'll give you my card and I wish you all well. You're in great hands. General surge, trauma, we have it. So I'm going to give you my card because if you need more information about subacute services, you can call me. I will be your information for you. When you go to subacute, make sure you dress and bring appropriate clothing. No skirts, no tight jeans. Um, things that can be layered in case you get warm in the gym because you will be working out. And that goes for no matter where you go. All right? So I'll give you my card and I wish you all well. You're in great hands. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Kathy with the Visiting Nurses. If you don't go to Subacute Rehab, we would love to have you part of our team. I represent, like I said, the Visiting Nurses. I'm the liaison here on site. So I work very closely from behind the scenes with discharge planning. Um, if you do choose our agency for a period of a couple of weeks until you go for your follow-up, and then at that point in time, you'll reassess with your surgeon. Um, we service all of Western New York, and we take... Most every insurance you could think of, if a funny one comes along, we'll be glad to do an insurance check and then we'll take it from there. Very smooth transition. We are a four and a half star agency. We take pride in that. Uh, always striving to be number five, so we would love to have you on our team. We'll take really good care of you. Any questions or concerns? So when does one sign up for whatever agency? Just before discharge? Can you usually, in advance or? usually, yes. Um, the discharge planner will come to your um, room 
and then uh, you guys will discuss it at that point in time. Okay? That's for you. Are you together? Yes. This is just some information. Here you go. Together? All right. Thanks, yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. Survey, if you don't mind taking a second to fill that out. Does anybody have any questions? That I, I do. thought you were going to show us the whole deal. <laughs> no, you can use that. Um, so, you know, coming into the hospital, um, should I be bringing sweatpants or should I? Sweatpants are, are is not a bad idea. You want to make sure that um, you don't have anything that's going to be too constricting on the knee. Depending on the weather, shorts, capris are fine. Um, sweatpants is a good idea. Um, something that's going to be able to sneakers. go over, yes, and sneakers. Um, something that's going to be able to go over that dress. And most people, what they come in with the day of surgery, go home with. Mm -hmm. That's what they wear home when they leave here, and that's fine. So that's actually, what you come in with, your family takes home and then brings back. You can leave it here. Oh. It doesn't matter. Um, some people bring clothes with them to the hospital, pajamas, that kind of stuff. You don't have to. I, I mean, most most people just have the hospital down there. On there. And that's fine. Whatever's going to make you comfortable. Okay. How many days do you usually stay? Good question. A knee is overnight usually two nights. Two nights. Okay. Yes. Some people do go home in one. They do very well. When I come in in the morning, they might be standing at the desk waiting for a therapy because they want to go home. Some people need a third night. So, you know, our average is, our average is two, though. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions you guys may have? You've got a few different business cards today. Again, please don't hesitate to use them. On the front of your envelope is either my card or my nurse manager, Renee's. Please don't hesitate to use either one of them. If you do have any questions when you get home that you didn't think of or that you you just um, want to confirm something that you heard. She's talking about the subacute. I mean, if I wanted to go look at tears, we could just go over Absolutely. And walk right in. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're more than welcome to do that. You're probably better off driving down there just because of the weather and, you know, just pull out of this lot and pull in down there. Okay. All righty. Thank you.